So we're going to be talking today about vacuum packing food and only dry materials. Uh, many people are familiar with vacuum packing, vacuum sealing uh, food in bags. That's not it. This is not that because actually those materials aren't under a vacuum. Any uh, air that's displaced, the film seals around it and the food itself is not stored under vacuum. It has all of the air removed by a vacuum. Yes, there is no air in there. It is uh, sealed, but it is not under a vacuum. And there's a big difference. Want to find out what that is? Stick around. We'll be looking at a couple of different ways of doing it and uh, hopefully have a little fun in the process. Welcome back. We're talking about vacuum sealing food today, vacuum packing food. And we're going to be using, today, we're going to be using mason jars, uh, strictly mason jars. There are other materials you could use, but that's what we have and that's what we're going to be using. They're heavy, they're bulky, but they hold a lot of food, they pack well on shelf, they're commonly available, and they do the job. They're good enough. But what we're going to be working with is a vacuum and a vacuum pump. And there are many kinds of vacuum pumps, some expensive, some not so expensive. I have a cheap one. So this is the pump we're working with. This pump will be hard pressed to get below uh, 29 inches of mercury. Uh, that's good enough for what we need. Our intent here is not to pull a hard vacuum, but simply to remove oxygen from the container. We'll be working with bell jars or mason jars, and they are sufficient for the purpose. Uh, we don't want a, a very hard vacuum anyway. They are not vacuum rated. So getting down uh, to below 25 inches of, of mercury is sufficient uh, for our needs, and I believe they will withstand that. The lids on these do vacuum seal. Uh, when you can food in a canner, in a pressure canner, or hot water bath canner, uh, when you take them out of the canner, uh, the lids, you'll notice they pop, they ding. That shows there's a vacuum on that system. And that means that uh, all of the air has been expelled from the system by uh, water pressure, by vapor, by steam and all the air has been purged from that vessel, from that jar, and the lid is on there, and as it cools down, the water vapor condenses and pulls apart and forms a vacuum, and that causes the lid to pop down, and as long as that stays under vacuum, then you know that no outside air has entered the system. And if that's the case, then there's a little spoilage that's going on, if there is any spoilage that goes on, generally uh, bacteria will, will create a gas as a byproduct of their, of their growth uh, and them eating their environment. Uh, and that will release uh, the, part of the vacuum in the, in the jar and the lid will pop up and you know that jar is no good. And that's another reason for not putting rings on the jars because if um, if you do have something fermenting in there and it pressurizes and the ring is on there, uh, one, you won't know it because you can't tell that the lid is loose, and, and two, it could build up pressure and uh, it could break the jars. Uh, the, these jars are strong, but they can explode from built up pressure, and uh, some of them, if you get the cheap ones, they can implode from too much vacuum. And we'll get to that here uh, in a little bit. But today we're going to be looking at storing food long term uh, in, uh, in a vacuum in a mason jar. We need a vacuum pump for that and we need a way to put that jar under vacuum. And that means creating an environment that has low pressure outside the, the jar uh, so that the air can come up through the lid and then when we release it, that lid will still be on there and the increased air pressure will push that lid down onto the rim of the jar and seal it, form a seal with that wax, rubber wax ring that's on the lid 
form a seal around that jar, create a good solid vacuum uh, below it. So to do that, we're going to use a couple of different things. The first one is a purpose-built container. This is a vacuum vessel. This is a big pot, stainless steel, fairly thick. Uh, it's much thicker than what you would find in a, uh, in a uh, pot, cooking vessel, cooking uh, pot. So don't think you can go to Walmart, buy a cheap um, a can or a cheap pot, stock pot, and use it as a vacuum vessel. It won't work. It will collapse. This is a good 3 eighths of an inch thick here. Very heavy. You also need a good solid piece of uh, uh, seal for it. This has a piece of silicone around the side. This is Lexan, uh, uh, bulletproof plexiglass type material. It's got a hole drilled in it and a little valve uh, set here that can open and close in both directions. The vacuum is formed here in the pump. It comes up through this hose. This hose is wire reinforced so it won't collapse. Uh, it's hooked up to this valve. We open this valve and that introduces vacuum. Open this valve and that introduces the uh, vacuum into here. It pulls air out and pulls a vacuum on it. And this is a vent for uh, relieving vacuum. And we got a little gauge here and that gauge goes up to officially 30 inches of mercury. But um, you will never get 30 inches of mercury uh, in a home environment. So we uh, this is a gauge of, of uh, this is gauge pressure, not absolute. Not that it matters. Uh, for most parts, they're both for most people, gauge versus absolute is the same, and we're not going to get into that. So. This is, uh, when I say 25 inches of mercury, that is 25 inches of vacuum from zero or ambient temperature, uh, pressure. I like this vessel uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it is not only useful for sealing jars, but I can put a, um, a roast in here and drench it in marinade, pull a vacuum on it, and make sure the roast is or meat is, is fully submerged. Pull a vacuum on it, it sucks all the air out from inside the meat from all the cuts. When I release the vacuum, all that marinade goes right up inside wherever uh, the air used to be. That marinade is pulled right up inside there and it completely saturates. You don't have to worry about soaking, you don't have to worry if you've got it exposed. You know that when you pull a uh, vacuum and release it, that that marinade has gone everywhere it can. It's also good for degassing um, materials. Um, I put a liner on here and a plastic liner over this uh, will seal just as well. Uh, this this uh, lid will seal just as well with a thin piece of plastic around here. So I put a liner over this and I can put in epoxy or resin that I've mixed up that has a lot of air bubbles in it and pull a vacuum on it, it will degas that and pull the, the air out of that um, uh, mixture. And then when I release the vacuum, it collapses back. Uh, so if, uh, if I'm stabilizing a piece of wood for turning, doing some wood turning, I can put that in here. I can coat it with the epoxy, uh, get it submerged, get it well coated, pull a vacuum, suck all the air out of the wood, all the wood pours, are evacuated and then when I release it all the resin epoxy goes back into the wood pores and fills it up uh, very nice so we're not talking about that today we're talking about food and so why and what would you want to vacuum pack well there are a number of things you might want to vacuum pack Dried goods such as rice or beans or flour or any powdered material that you happen to make. Um, we do freeze drying. We have some chickens, have a little farm and what we don't uh, sell, the eggs we don't sell. After a week they come back here and they get freeze dried. 
And then uh, we package them up. We've got some bottles of freeze-dried eggs over here that we will uh, vacuum pack here shortly. And once they are uh, freeze-dried and vacuum packed, they're going to be good for 25 years. Uh, things like flour. Uh, yes, there are uh, these days uh, flour is pretty insect free. But just one or two eggs, if it happens to be sitting out, just one or two eggs over time can lead to uh, infestation. And uh, we pulled, pulled a uh, bag of, of cornmeal out of the back of the pantry that had been buried. And I was uh, three years old, and there were weevils crawling around in it. Uh, if it had been vacuum packed, they would not have hatched, they would not have survived. Uh, so vacuum packing will preserve food a lot longer uh, than just uh, leaving it set open, set empty or uh, at room uh, pressure. Right now this has oxygen in it, it's got air in it, pull a vacuum on it, there's no air in there, there's no oxygen in there, it can't degrade uh, by uh, oxidation. Most of your enzymatic processes require oxygen in order to degrade food. Uh, the oxygen's not there, it won't happen. If you do happen to have any little critters that happen to get through the processing and uh, have some eggs or something that might have passed through, it uh, doesn't matter once they, they need air to live just like the rest of us. And if there's no air inside there, they're dead. So we, uh, we have a couple of reasons to vacuum pack it. And so let's uh, show how this works. First, we're going to be using this. Also, I've got uh, some of these. Some of you may have a, a vacuum sealer uh, for uh, bags, vacuum sealed bags. And uh, they make this, these little containers, these little caps that fit over the top of your jar and will create an airtight seal around this blue ring and this space up here then can be exposed to vacuum, had the air sucked out of it, which will then suck it out of the jar and does pretty much the same thing. Uh, it's a little less expensive, of course, than that big stainless uh, container. You will still need a vacuum pump. Uh, if you think the, uh, the uh, food saver uh, type jars or, or sealers you used a vacuum seal, your, your bags uh, will pull as hard a vacuum as this. You're crazy. Uh, they will pull air out of the bag. Don't get me wrong, they do, they do that. You can see it suck the air out. But they are not pulling a vacuum on that bag. With this, if you put water in here and you pull a hard vacuum on here with the vacuum pump, uh, you put water in here, this will cause that water to boil. And because it, uh, under vacuum, uh, the boiling point of water decreases and it will decrease below ambient temperature. And so the water will boil and evaporate and boil off. With one of those vacuum sealer, uh, food saver type uh, uh, vacuums, you will never get that hard of a vacuum. And if you're doing dehydrated materials, I strongly recommend you use this type of vacuum instead. Uh, you can use these with that vacuum and we will do that. It's this uh, vacuum has a little port on the side that can be used uh, just like your food saver, just like your uh, vacuum bag sealer and we will uh, get to that with a couple of these here just as a demonstration but first I want to get some of these big jars out of the way and the nice thing about a big box like this a big bucket like this is I can put these half gallon jars in there now these are not sealed I'm not going to crank them down I don't want them cranked down I want them loose because when I pull a vacuum on this, I want that lid to pop up and the air to come out. And when I 
That was uh, two half gallons jars with uh, powdered duck egg. And this is some dried milk, uh, two two percent milk, and a quart and a half, and then a little pint, a pint and a half, and then a pint. So we got three large jars and two smaller ones in there, and we'll put this right on top here. Now, one thing you want to be careful of. And that is uh, getting it too close, getting the um, jar too close to this lid. This is going to push down on it. And when it pushes down on it, you don't want a, a, a pivot point on here to crack it. You put a, it's going to put down, it's going to push down at, at about 15 pounds per square inch. And this is a 10, uh, say 10 inches, 12 inches. 10 inches it's easier so we got about uh, six see the area is pi r squared right so this is about 25 times pi about 75 pounds of pressure is going to be pushed down on this to seal it and 75 pounds of pressure uh, if you have a little point here it's pushing up against it that 75 pushing down concentrated that little point can easily break this glass so when you put it down there, you want to shake it a little bit and make sure that anything on top is freely moving. So we're going to turn this off, turn this on, and make some noise. And you see the valve coming down here. Now this pump is cheap, and one of the aspects of a cheap pump is that it makes uh, this aerosol, this gas uh, aerosol. But that's good enough. That's all it takes. Like I said, these pumps are cheap, and it... Uh, when it pumps the air out, it makes a little gas, a um, little uh, uh, aerosol of that oil. That's why you always want to use food grade oil. So and this is now sealed. Uh, these have popped in and they have popped in much further than what you would see in a, uh, in a canned environment. To get this open, you're going to need to puncture that and pry it up. You're not going to be able to pry it off with a fork or a spoon or some utensil. Certainly not your fingers. Now we have, as it happens, a uh, freeze dryer, and it has a vacuum pump on it. This is not the vacuum pump from that freeze dryer. That vacuum pump is a much higher quality pump and much more expensive. And could be used for this, except Except I've got other, it's in use now and I can't use it at the same time. So we've got more milk, we've got more eggs, we've got freeze dried potatoes. These are just simply red potatoes that were sliced and um, it's not going to fit. One more small thing of, of eggs. And it doesn't take long to do these. Make sure.
sure the right valves are closed and open. And like I said, we don't need a hard vacuum. I'm just going to take it down to around 25 and release it. And that's all it takes. Now that's all I'm going to use this one for. I've got some more jars. Let's get these over here. In order to read the pressure on the vacuum pump, I'm going to have to have it hooked up to this container. But this port on the side here, this side port here, has a screw cap seal it off when it's not in use, but that hole, that opening, is just the right size for this tubing connector used, that uh, is used by the uh, vacuum sealer. Uh, this is my first time using this one. Put it on there and put this cover over it, and this cover I don't know if you can see it, but it fits in there, and, and this cover fits over the uh, glass and forms a ring, a seal, around the rim of the glass. And we're going to be turning this on, putting it in there, and then you're not going to be able to see it, but I can monitor the um, vacuum level by looking at this gauge down here. And I, I had to put the gauge on the vessel, on the, on the can, because I don't have a way of hooking it up otherwise. And while we're waiting on that to suck it down, okay, there's 25 inches. Put this one on here. And it's pulling it back down again. And these others use the smaller lid. Regular mouth lid. So pull that out. Put that on there. I'm doing is watching this valve, this uh, pressure gauge over here, until it gets above 25 inches, and then popping it out, which releases the vacuum under here, and causes this cap to suck down on there real tight. And that's it. This little thing has come loose. This gasket popped out. That's okay. I think it'll be fine. Get through with it. And I don't think it'll be alright for the next one. So now we got all our lids sealed. Um, that is on there really, really tight. Again, Pulling uh, 20 inches of mercury on here, you're getting about 12 psi pressure differential across this, and that's per square inch, 12 pounds per square inch. 
And if on these larger ones, uh, you got a couple of inch diameter. So uh, uh, you're talking uh, what about 30, 33 uh, square inches. So three times 12 is 36 pounds. You got 36 pounds pushing on here. Uh, that's probably a little low estimate. If you want to, uh, if you're really interested in, in precision, do the math. You've got a calculator. It's built into your computer. Just find it, click on it. Uh, but that's it for today. These are under vacuum now. Uh, any residual moisture that might have been in there, uh, might have been entrained in this, has been is now being evaporated and uh, vaporized and volatilized, and so it will. Uh, stay fresh longer. The, any bugs or, uh, that you might have got picked up from your bulk 50 pound bag of rice uh, in a tow sack, uh, that, uh, those bugs are now dead. And any eggs they may have had uh, laying around, they're not going to hatch. They're not going to do anything. We got milk that's been dried and is good for 25 years. We've got red potatoes that have been dried. Make good mashed potatoes out of that. Or mix them in with uh, your eggs, your dried eggs for an omelet. And we've got uh, eggs and potatoes and rice and milk. So we got your staples. All your starch and protein you need to survive for as long as you want. So there you have it. If you want to vacuum seal anything, these are nice little pumps. I don't know that I will put one uh, in the description below. Uh, you can find them on eBay. You can find them on Amazon. I don't have an affiliate link, so uh, you know, go find whichever one you want. If you want to give me money, uh, just... Uh, Send it to me. Uh, cut out the middle, man. It is heavy, so it's a uh, nice, solid machine. I don't expect it to last decades. Uh, it's a vacuum pump. It will pump uh, for a while, and it'll do what I need it to. If I was using it uh, hard and heavy, like for a freeze dryer, this would not be the machine I'd use. For the little bit that uh, this is being used for this, it's ideal. It gets a nice hard vacuum, and it's uh, inexpensive. So preserve things. Uh, vacuum pumps are nice. This little container is nice. Again, you can find them on eBay. You can find them on Amazon. Uh, just look for a, a vacuum. Uh... So have fun. We'll talk to you later. If you like what you see, uh, Hit that like button, uh, and uh, be sure to subscribe. A lot of people don't. They're nearly, uh, well, 95% of the people who watch this aren't subscribers. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I do the same myself, so I, I know where you're coming from. But please, if you get a chance to hit that subscribe button, uh, hit that notification bell, and you'll get uh, notified when I have more stuff like this come out. Well, you get notified when I have more stuff, anything, come out. Uh, if you like this, uh, be sure and like that, uh, hit that like button, uh, let YouTube know what kind of videos you like and they'll serve up more similar to it. We'll talk to you later.